I am Ultra Llama! Welcome to Ultra Llama's Twilight Struggle Game Reviews! <laughs> I am your host, Ultra Llama! Can you handle the llama? Well, in this game, we will play a man named Charles Bronson. So this is a game review. This is, I tried to do the live commentary, and I... I don't know, my live commentary is just not very good sometimes, because I either I feel like I can either talk or I can think, and I can't do both very well. So we're just going to go back and rewatch this one and do a game review. This was a really good game. So my opponent is Charles Bronson, in all caps, which I like. Um, I, and, and Charles Bronson is actually one of my favorite actors of all time. I love Charles Bronson. Um, my favorite Charles Bronson scene is in Once Upon a Time in the West where he gets off the train and he sees these three guys and they have three horses with him and he says, Did you bring a horse for me? And the, the three guys, like the lead guy, sort of the villain, starts laughing. He's like, ha, 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 looks like we're one horse too short. And then Charles Bronson retorts, looks to me like you brought two too many. So, yeah, that's my favorite Charles Bronson line ever. <laughs> All right, so time for my introduction. I am Ultra Llama. Now, this is a uh, pretty crappy first hand. Um, so we'll just look at it real quick here. Now, the good thing is I got decal, but most of the rest of it's kind of bad. I mean, CNS, if I have to have a one-op card, CNS is okay. But notice I got four one-ops, which is bad. Um, and then the rest are, you know, I got two two-ops and DNC. I mean, DNC is okay here and decal is okay. But really, the rest of the hand is pretty weak. Um, so typically here, I would think about the only real headlines, well... I guess you could headline Cambridge 5, CNS, and Nasser. I'm not really considering decal in this spot with defectors out there. I decided to go with Nasser because I was really worried he was going to headline Middle East. But a lot of times I might pick CNS there. But it turns out Nasser ends up being the best choice since it gets defectored anyway, and I don't really care if Nasser gets defectored too much. So this is sort of a no-brainer move. D uh, duck and cover to coup Iran. And this is one where the opening Iran coup is always interesting as the Soviets because you, you're you kind of rooting, like in this case, I was rooting for a three or a six. Like a four is one of the worst, or really, I mean a one or a two is worse, but a four is like the next worst role. Like a three is actually a better role because it eliminates his access. But um, he's actually going to decide to coup back here with Comic-Con, and he rolls a six. So not off to a good start. Now, I'm going to tell you what I end up doing here is I, I think in my head, like, okay, this is great. I'm going to be able to event decal real quick. But then I dumbly, or I should say belatedly, but originally dumbly tried to play decal and then realized I still had CIA in my hand. So we'll just fast forward a little bit as I go through this stupid move. But um, this is like a really bad card for me, though. I mean, CIA is not that bad here in a lot of cases, but because I got decal and it would be so super strong in this situation, CIA really destroys all my momentum here. I am able to get the op into Lebanon where he's trying to get into Thailand, but basically my whole plan here, like decal would have been super strong if I would just been able to play it there, but I really hate not getting rid of CIA when I have the opportunity. And you know, he could have Fidel. Like if I had Fidel in my hand, maybe I could have held off a little bit later in the turn at least, but... But it's just a really, CIA was just really problematic for me here because I don't really get as big of an advantage of, for decal as I normally would. So yeah, he's able to play in the Thailand and he goes into France, which is really bad for me. So I just have to use him in Africa, which is good for later, but not really like that super advantageous. So it's sort of a very disappointing decal.
Charles Bronson. Now I've played this guy before, I think under another account. I guess it had to be under another account, but uh, he does make a little, I kind of feel like this is a little bit of a mistake, not overprotecting Thailand when I have the China card and I've already gotten rid of CIA. So I'm able to take Thailand. Uh, he did get Laos, but I'm much happier with being able to take Thailand, even if I have to give up the China card. So I'm going to go up into uh, South Korea as well. I want to go ahead and get an op in there since I'm playing Formosa. And really I'm, I'm planning on holding Cambridge 5 and Blockade to turn 2. Albeit Blockade is just not as useful as it would have been if I'd held on to the China card. But um, my plan here is just to event CNS. If you're watching this and you're a Charles Bronson fan, you should leave some comments on your favorite Charles Bronson lines. I'd like to hear some of those Charles Bronson lines. I haven't actually watched a ton of Charles Bronson movies. Like Once Upon a Time in the West is one. He was in what a few other westerns. He's in the Dirty Dozen. I, I love that movie. I think of some of the others that I've seen him in. I've definitely not like seen like I mean, he's made like a ton of movies and I haven't seen but maybe like half a dozen of them. Ooh, cursor. Sorry. Alrighty. Man, my cat really wants in here to start helping, so uh, we're just going to let him in. We're just going to let him in. Come on in. So, you know. Alright, so you may get a cat as well. Maybe he'll help with the commentary. There he is. I don't know if the mic picked him up or not. Okay, so let's pause here while we look at our cards and... Um, So I do have Red Scare and Defectors is gone, so it's a possibility, but I I think I end up headlining Cambridge 5. I mean, maybe I should have headlined Red Scare, but I really wanted the Ops. There's my cat trying to put his butt near my water. Thanks for that. Gotta like that cat butt water. He's really surprisingly chatty for now. I just fed him and he's normally not like he he normally sits on the couch and I don't it's like there's this curve in the couch and he likes sticking his gut in it after he eats. Like I feel like it's like his equivalent of like Al Bundy sticking his hand in his pants after a meal. But he's really kinda hyper right now. Alright, so what did we do here? I don't even know what we did. Okay, we could Panama we got a good roll, so even though the luck on the first turn was pretty bad, we at least get a good coup roll here. Now overall, I should say, I'm not feeling really good about my position at this point. I feel like he's definitely had a pretty big advantage early war. That first hand, and turn one is just so integral in this game. It's one of the, I think it's one of the things that leads to some imbalanced games is that if one person just gets a much stronger hand in turn one, it's, it can be pretty tough to come back sometimes. And so he gets a much stronger turn one hand. And my turn two hand is pretty weak too. I mean, I've got a lot of three or one ops in this one as well. 
So he gets destall, which is bad news for me. But he does space it, which is a big mistake. I'm not actually, so we'll talk about that a bit. I'm not actually sure why he spaced destall there. Because not only does he, not only can he hold it, because I haven't played blockade yet, but he actually has the china card, so he doesn't even really have to, I mean, he can hold two cards if he wants to. So there's not really a reason he has to space destall there. So I'm not sure what the reasoning of that was, that he just wanted to get a space race roll, but I would prefer not playing D I would prefer holding D stall to turn three there. So I don't have a lot of moves. I've got such a low op hand. I just play into Israel, hoping to kind of get into Egypt and Libya. So, I'm definitely in a pretty crappy position right now. I mean, I'm not ahead anywhere other than Africa, which is sort of meaningless to the mid-war and is also the easiest region to flip. I mean, even if you have African control, it's completely precarious. It can be easily flipped with just a few good cards. So, I'm not really in great shape anywhere. I do have more battlegrounds in Asia, but I had to give him Formosa he's kind of in a better shape long term even in asia i think he did make a little bit of mistake here though uh not playing he got really obsessed with europe and not and just sort of let me creep along in the middle east which i think ends up being a mistake because i just don't have much ops to do anything i think he should have tried to get into egypt and particularly because uh nasser came out on turn one even though it wasn't invented he, you know, he should have been trying to get into Egypt and get into Libya, I think. So, the game's not going too well for me, but I, I am able to get into the western part of the Middle East, which is nice. I have the advantage in Africa. I got Panama, so at least turn two's going a little bit better for me than turn one. I think I just end up deciding to you and intervene five-year plan, just go ahead and take the three ops. I guess I could have held five-year plan in case I got Europe scoring. And maybe that would have been the right move, actually, but I just decide to... I want the ops pretty bad. So maybe a mistake on my part, maybe not. It just depends. I'm not like as... Obs like I know some people hold on to five-year plan like it's the holy grail and i'm not one of those players um just because it can backfire too um you know if there's a lot of unfavorable scoring cards and yeah i'm definitely gonna hold on to five-year plan but if i'm not really too far behind anywhere nothing looks too bad i'll often just try to get rid of it So I am getting to take advantage of those uh, early war Soviet mill ops. Those are helping keep the score close. Okay, so this is another hand. So this one, unlike the previous two hands, this hand's actually a bit stronger, but it's got a lot of problems in it, and there's not like a good headline. So this was my issue here. It's like, okay, socialist government seems like a good headline here. But you start looking at this hand, and it's really not. Because what does it achieve? And the only thing it does is if he headlines Europe scoring, which he's probably not going to, uh, I get like a cheap dodge, sort of. You know, I end up being able to score Europe at plus one rather than negative five. But he's not going to do that anyway most of the time, so it's, it's just not a useful card here. I think I'd rather have the three ops. And you look at my hand, I got DNC, I got Marshall, I got Norad. So those are three problem cards. And if I don't headline Socialist Governors, I don't have a good headline. So I end up going with Truman as the least bad headline. I want to preserve those Socialist Government ops. I don't really want to play Truman because I don't want to give up those two, uh, the two influence in Austria in case I get d -stall. But I just don't feel like I got a lot of good choices here. So I go with Truman.
And I might have taken a really long time to decide on it because I was not happy with my choice of headlines here. So he gets containment, another really good headline for him. Early were his favorite team so far. And now I got another dilemma. I don't really have a great coup target. Iran's at four, which makes it sort of a bad target. So my only real target is South Africa. All right, I've just been stopping the recording when nothing's been happening, see how that goes. <laughs> but he says he likes my YouTube channel, and now, and I was thinking I should just not put this game up out of spite. But uh, obviously it is up because you're watching it. Pretty obvious there. All right, so I'm just going to use Independent Reds to coup South Africa. I think it's the only real choice here. I mean, I guess I could play D and C, but I am not really a fan of that. I don't want to give him three VPs because I feel like I'm already kind of a little bit behind the eight ball and maybe like a war games win might be my only path to victory. But I roll a six on South Africa, so that's really good because it eliminates his access to Africa completely. So... Things are looking up a little bit. I still got a lot of problems this hand. All right, he plays Olympic Games. He's clearly going for Asia, and I was um, I wasn't paying much attention. This is what I said when I do the live commentary. I play worse, and this was one of those games where I definitely played worse. Like I wasn't paying attention to the fact he had Asia scoring. I thought he might have it, but I was. I forgot that it hadn't come out. So I didn't really focus on it too much. Now, I might not have been able to stop him anyway, so it might not have been that big of a deal. But maybe I could have considered like spacing first and saving um, um, nuclear test ban to try to screw him up in Asia. But I didn't. But I think that probably would have been a better move in hindsight. Like, I should have spaced D and C right there. Just let him go ahead and do what he was going to do in Asia, but uh, keep my high ops, get rid of the bad cards, and see if there was anything I could do to disrupt him. And maybe there wasn't, really. Now, the good news is that all of a sudden, even though the early war luck hasn't really been in my favor, the die rolls are in my favor suddenly, so... So I hit that space race roll, which is big because now I don't have to event Marshall. And so I should say the main reason I don't want to event Marshall, I mean, I've kind of semi-given up on Europe. But one thing I'm looking at is that um, the only possible way I can flip Europe is Brush War, and he hasn't really protected Italy. So I don't want to give him Marshall so that he can protect Italy from Brush War. So he gets destall again, so I think in my live commentary I probably screamed fuck or something right there. So we'll see what I do here. I think I go into um, a rock. But we'll just pause for a second here. So the thing is with destall being gone, I'm kind of, it's it's not looking too good for me. I mean Africa looks great, but it can get flipped before it gets scored. Scoring might not come out to turn seven. Africa is really precarious anyway, so it could be, even though it looks nice in Africa for me, it could be completely meaningless. Um, I'm down 8 VPs. I was down 9, but I, I gained 1 somehow there, but um, I'm still down 8 VPs. I don't have access to South America, so I'm really hoping to pick up like a Linde, Junta. Uh, d -Stall is now gone, but maybe I can get it with salt negotiations so i'm really hoping to pick up salt as well but it's kind of an uphill battle because he's probably gonna have better south american access 
I'm gonna have to hope, you know, just to catch a little bit of luck in the mid war. I'm really like thinking like even this early in the game, I'm thinking final scoring is gonna be pretty tough for me. It's not impossible, but it's gonna be pretty tough. Um, I'm also thinking he's gonna hoard the China card because he took Taiwan with Formosa, uh, where I should say with the benefit of Formosa. And so Nasser also kind of ends up being a bad card for me, but this is like a weird move by him that um, this one probably deserves some explanation. And I moved really quickly here, but um, I had this plan the whole turn, I think. Um, but he puts an op into Cuba, which is sort of weird. I'm not sure. I, and I know he's got Fidel in his hand. And when he puts that op in there, I realize he has Fidel in his hand. And he's probably going to space it. Now, I was planning to make this move anyway before he did that. But I'm just going to use socialist governments to knock down his influence in France and West Germany. And my thought is that this, like, it's going to force him to react in Europe. Or if he doesn't react, maybe I get a cheap score in Europe that's to my favor. But this is going to yield an interesting result because he was going to play into Cuba and probably space Fidel. But now that I make this socialist government's move, he changes his mind and he's going to vent Fidel now. And I can't remember if he spaced this turn or not. I mean, this is definitely a debatable one. I mean, I don't know if this is the right move or not. It might be. I mean, I don't really have a huge issue with eventing Fidel as the Soviets most, or as the U.S. most of the time. So maybe this is the right move. But it also puts makes him pretty vulnerable in Central America. So there are pros and cons to it for sure. All right, so so this hand's so the good part of this hand, um, he still hasn't protected Italy well. So and I caught brush war, so that part's pretty lucky for me. I might have a shot at flipping Europe if I can get brush war in Italy. The other really good thing is I've got both. Central America scoring and liberation theology. Now the downside is that uh, he still has defectors, so I'm taking a risk if I headline liberation theology. But I decided to do it anyway. Um, the only other option would be like Willie Brandt. There's no reason to headline brushwork because I'm afraid of defectors anyway. The only reason I'm headlining liberation theology is just because it's so beneficial. I do have some bad cards here. VOA, five-year plan, and NORAD are all in my hand. So let's see what I do, even though I actually know what I do. I play Liberation Theology. And so actually, I should say, this does create a big debate. So he's not going to have defectors. I'll just spoil that here. The big debate is, so he does have Ask Not, which ends up being super, super powerful for him. Um, he gets rid of a lot of bad cards. Somehow I never get those ask knots. I don't know. I never get the ask knots where I have like seven Soviet events in my hand. But he gets rid of like what lone gunmen, Southeast Asia, a lot of bad cards. I guess Southeast Asia isn't even that bad for him. But so here was my debate, um, and I'll pause it. I already made the move, but do I coup now that I've got Central America control? Because he could pretty easily realign me out of Mexico, especially since he played Kennedy and just got rid of virtually every bad Soviet event in the game. He's going to have probably a good hand now. I just decide that I'm going to sacrifice the coup in order to take the nine points in Central America. I don't really want to chance it. The downside, though, is now I'm going to have to give up my African control, and that's going to end up having bigger implications than I expected. And so this is one of the reasons why he he rolls spectacular in Africa. He rolls a five. If he rolled a three or something, it's not really that bad. All right, here goes the brush war into Italy. There we go. And so Europe is flipped.
or at least it's now even or plus one for me rather than being dominated by him. So definitely in a better spot in Europe now. So the games, you know, it started out really bad for me, but it's starting to slowly flip a little bit in my favor. The South America is still a big issue. But now he gets ABM. And so in my live game commentary, I, I mentioned that the game was starting to flip in my direction. And then he played ABM. I was like, damn it. Curse myself. So what, he rolled like a five or a six there with ABM. And now, like, Africa actually looks really difficult now. I mean, it's the swingiest region, and it almost looks... Very difficult for me to retake these countries now because he had such good coup rolls. And so I don't really have much of a choice here. I have to play EEU. Nothing else I can do. I've got to defend Africa and Thailand. I am going to have a debate here, though, about whether I should space five-year plan or NORAD. Now, typically, it's NORAD you're going to space, but I'm looking at the board, and there's nothing really that bad for me out there. Like, I'm ahead in the Middle East. Asia's been scored. I'm ahead in, um, you know, up three to two battlegrounds in Europe. So, I'm not... I mean, you could still make the case for holding five-year plan. We don't know what's going to happen in South America yet. But I decide to just go ahead and space five-year plan. I don't remember if it was this action round or not, but... So typically, you would want to hold five-year plan, but I this is a game where I've spaced it twice as the Soviets. Just not seeing... I don't want to just hold it for no reason, I guess is my position. So he's not had too good luck with his space race rolls. That's one area where I've definitely had better luck. And I remember this. So I put two into Spain. To give me Europe domination, he's just going to respond by putting two into Greece, which makes sense. So I am like pausing the recording here occasionally just to uh just so it'll be shorter. But so now I got European domination again. All right. And so he plays Romanian abdication here, which actually ends up being pretty good for me cuz independent reds is already gone. Uh it gives me a more secure domination in Europe. So I feel like things have flipped a little bit more in my favor, but but I still don't have anything in South America. And I have a very problematic hand here. So the good news is I'm able to see his headline, which ends up being a lifesaver because he headlines Missile Envy here. And I have to headline Red Scare. I don't really have a choice because if I don't headline Red Scare, then then Red Scare is evented on me, so I have to he headline it here. But my hand's very problematic because I raced ahead on the space race, but now I've got puppet governments and OAS in the same hand. I don't have an access card to South America. I mean, I can dump off South America scoring before anything happens this time, but long term, I'm, this puts me in a difficult spot there. At least it theoretically does. So I give him shuttle dip, really the only choice. I'm not giving up OPEC, and I'm not giving him NORAD with five turns remaining. Charles Bronson! Oh, there's the cat again. He really wants to help out. 
Ultra Cat. La 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 so this is why I was not like real confident about like um, my position in Africa, even when I had control earlier. It's just so easy to flip Africa. So all it took was I gave up a coup in order to score Central America for control. He then rolls a five. He then plays ABM, rolls a five, and now he's just like in this. He's really in the driver's seat in South America or South or Africa now. And I got a lot of problems. I probably should have just uh, played OPEC while I could here, but I didn't. What did I do? It wasn't the right thing, whatever I did do. I was also not real eager to put ops into Botswana because um, this is where I discover I can't space puppet governments. But I was also eager not to put ops into Botswana because I just wanted to keep collecting those two mil ops. So I just go ahead and space Norad, but I should have evented OPEC here and taken the three uh, VPs. So it ends up being a mistake not doing that. Because now I got to react to John Paul II. And he is, um, maybe you can guess what he's going to play that makes me frustrated with not playing OPEC. Yep, so the, uh, I actually thought he might have had it last turn uh, when he played Camp David, but he has it this turn. I don't know if he held it or he just happened to pick it up. So I only get two VPs from OPEC instead of the three. I should have gotten if I hadn't screwed up there. Do, 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 do. And he continues to get good rolls here. Wipes me right out of Cuba. I don't even know if South African unrest is worth it here, but I didn't really have much else to do. I guess I could have played into Saudi Arabia or Israel, but I just went ahead and played it. Now I have a debate because I have to vent either OAS or Puppet Govs. I decide to go with the OAS since it's two ops and Puppet Governments is three, and he's probably going to use both of them in South America anyway. But he makes a big mistake here not eventing Panama Canal. So I know he wants to get like that better position in Africa, but I, I, I just don't feel like the Panama Canal move was that smart. I, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't say smart, but I, I don't like that move. I would rather... Use it for access. Even if I have to hold it an extra turn, I would still rather use that for access. He plays in the Chile. And I think this, his reasoning is he just doesn't have a lot of ops, so he's just going to go where he can protect himself in Chile, which is reasonable. I just overprotect Poland. I should say I kept forgetting he had Red Scare, or he was under Red Scare this turn because that's what happens when I do the commentary at the same time as playing. I forget important stuff like that. So I probably didn't have to overprotect Poland there. I could have played into Saudi Arabia, but I do lose South Africa, unfortunately. I get the two VPs, though. We're really clinging on to those VPs. And, you know, that's part of my, we'll pause here, um, that's part of my, I'm looking at this board thinking my best path to victory is still war games. It's at least flipped enough that, like, final scoring's now starting to become an option. I don't think I'm going to get the 20 VPs, that one's probably not happening, but maybe war games or final scoring. Now, what I want to headline here is Africa scoring while it's just tied up rather than, you know, allowing him to get that op into South Africa and get domination. Unfortunately, he's going to thwart my plans. Uh, 
All right, so started back, and so he headlines grain cells. So I headline Brezhnev rather than Africa scoring, given this. And he draws Flower Power, which is not the card I want him to draw. I would have much rather him drawn Defectors or Africa scoring. Or Latin American Death Squads, the Death Squids, as I like to call them. I like to call them the Death Squids because when I was there was a message board I was on like a decade ago and there was this one guy who wasn't very smart and he would make typos all the time and he once called Latin America it it wasn't like in relation to Twilight Struggle, it was something relating to the Death Squads in Latin America and he called them accidentally called them the Death Squids, so I, I, I like I prefer to think of them that way as the death squids. So we do got Brezhnev. That means we're going to be able to space puppet govs at least. I am also probably eventing. In fact, I should say I know because I've already played the game. I'm eventing salt negotiations. I really want to get ABM, but I'm instead going to get D stall because most of south america still hasn't been touched so it seems pretty good spot for d-stall but i got i've been really screwed by his roles in africa right because it's gonna be tough to flip any of these three one stability battlegrounds because he's rolled like fives and sixes on all his coups there <laughs> So it's like a 2-3 coup job to reverse that damage. So we take our D stall. Now Defcon's at 4. I use this opportunity to say, Can you handle the llama? He plays Yusuri here, which is... I'm not really sure why he plays Yusuri here, actually. <laughs> it's not necessarily bad, it just... It seems like a weird spot to play it. But... I, I thought about realigning, but I just didn't want to take the chance. So I just used NATO to plug up the damage. And now he coos Thailand with the China card. And I don't like this move. Uh, the main reason is because he's already got the advantage in Asia with Formosa, and playing the China card means he has to give up that advantage. Now, it looks like he's still ahead in Asia because of shuttle diplomacy, but in reality, now it's, it's sort of tied for the long game now, and that's why I don't like that move. I would have... Rather have clinged on to the China card. If it were like, I don't know, if he were further behind or further ahead, maybe it doesn't matter, but basically with it being 3-3 and then Taiwan with Formosa making it 4-3 in his favor, I don't like giving up the China card in those spots. I mean, sometimes you have to, but... But I'm like, that's like absolute... Like, last thing I want to do. You know, I'm going to try anything else before that. He also plays We Will Bury You Here, which I think is a big mistake. Because if you look at the board for me, I'm still worried about... I still don't think I'm, like, in spectacular position and that my best path to victory is war games. So We Will Bury You plays into that. Now, what he's trying to do is offset Europe scoring because I got domination, but he's giving up he's giving me three VPs to offset those four VPs from Europe scoring. So I mean I don't know that it's really that worthwhile of a trade off. Now it does prevent me from cooing um back in Africa, but that's not like a huge deal. I think it took me a while to decide where to take these ops from. I think I'm going to end up deciding two from Vietnam, one from Italy, and one from Finland. And for some reason in my head, I thought I'd screwed up, but I didn't there. So we're just going to 
fast forward a little bit. So I put I put one into every South American country. He's going to dump off Europe scoring uh, at just negative one for him. But I'm able to get those three from We Will Bury You. And this is sort of a tough decision because I want to get rid of these cards like puppet governments right now. How do you get, maybe I should have just played puppet governments. Not nearly as bad now that I'm in South America. But I end up just dumping off Africa scoring. He gets Middle East scoring at plus three for him, which is good. So I wasn't able to find a way to prevent that. And so I end up spacing puppet governments and it works out, but you know, I am thinking in my head, maybe I could have not played that there. Cause now I've got, there's enough ops on the board so that he's not just getting free access to anywhere. I mean, it'd still be an advantage, advantageous card to him, but it's not nearly as advantageous as it was. I really kind of want to hold defectors here. I guess it doesn't matter as much though, since I'm um, since I'm on the headline phase of the space race. But yeah, I definitely have to take Argentina now. I can't let him take that. And I think I take Brazil with the other up. And we'll hold Bear Trap for another turn. So he gets the plus two this turn, unfortunately. So I get I was actually hoping I would get Che and I did, so that ends up being good, but then he gets Junta, which is bad for me. Um I'm thinking I still headline Che though. Stupid J. Stupid hipster Kami. I really I really do find myself annoyed with people wearing J t shirts. It's like the guy was a really awful human being. Why do people celebrate him? Oh, and he gets the six with Junta. I mean, I feel like it's kind of a double standard. Like, if someone was going around wearing a Hitler t-shirt, like, everyone would complain. But for some reason, people wear Che t-shirts. Like, really? So, I'm going to get the opportunity to go back into Cuba. He is going to slam some ops into it, though. But that's good for me as well, because it does create another path to victory if Ortega comes out, potentially. He's had such good coup rolls that it's tough for me to, like, counter coup now. Because, like, he rolled, what, a 6 in Argentina? He rolled a 6 or a 5 in Nigeria? Rolled 5s in Zaire and... Um, Angola. And so even with a huge op card like AVM, it's tough to flip these battlegrounds because he's had such good coup rolls. I mean, maybe I should have just taken Cuba with that. I think he would have had a hard time flipping it back if I had taken it because... Um... 
because I have five in what is that country there? I should know, but I don't. Haiti, that's right. I'm thinking I didn't play the China card there. Yep, I changed my mind. I don't like that I have Nixon plays the China card in my hand, but I was also thinking about the space race, that if I hit the next roll, I would be able to discard Nixon at the end of the turn. So that's what ended up leading to my decision there to not play the China card. Now, I guess the downside, like if I take in Cuba, it still doesn't really protect me in Mexico. So that's kind of, I think maybe that was part of my thinking as to why I didn't just take Cuba with ABM, but maybe I should have anyway. And we hit the space race roll. So we've had very good luck on space race. I find this happens sometimes when you... Like you have bad luck in other areas and then you have great luck on the space race. I've had really great luck on the space race though in this game. Because I haven't even used, I, did, I think I did use CNS, but I, did, I, you know, I didn't have to use like OSS to jump ahead or anything. So he takes uh, Saudi Arabia, but I got Muslim Revolution, which works out pretty well for me. He just goes ahead and dumps Middle East, which gives me the opportunity to take Egypt with Indo-Pak. Trying to set up for long-term and board position. And I'm doing, it's taken me a long time, but I've started flipping the board pretty well. And every time I think that something bad happens, so I will just throw that out there. I, I, I do the blockade check here. I'm not going to be, this is the last turn I can play it since I have to play it. I, I want to get rid of Nixon in the discard. So, so just hoping he doesn't have something, but he has Quagmire. Uh, but he is forced to event Alinde. But then he rolls very well. Well, I guess it's just 4-4 four, four, and he had the plus 2, but same deal really. Get rid of Nixon. And I think this is another one of those crap hands. Like, just when I'm starting to regain control of the board, I get another terrible hand. No, no, take it back. I have, it must be turn nine that was a terrible hand. This is a very good hand, other than grain sales, which I can get rid of now that I can discard at the end of the turn. So... This is actually a very good hand for me. Now the only downside is I can't hold Aldrich Ames. Uh, I'd, I'd rather hold Aldrich Ames to turn 9 or turn 10, but because I've got grain cells and i got to discard that at the end of the turn, I can't do that. So I just go ahead and... I don't remember what he headlines, but I'm going to go ahead and headline Aldrich Ames. Now the only negative with this hand is I've got NATO and special relationships still out there. So I'm not, that's the only thing that's really kind of a problem. Otherwise though, this is a great hand for me. However, he has a strong headline with VOA. I'm actually surprised how he used it, though. I thought he was going to take ops out of Brazil and Venezuela. So I am able to get rid of Africa scoring here. I think that's sort of the no-brainer move here because I don't think I'm going to score it beneficially for me. Now, the, the only good thing about VOA, VOA sucks, but if you're the Soviets, but... The only good thing is it means now it's not going to come out on turn 10 where it really can do some damage. But I do lose Mexico. And so that's why I was talking about, like, you know, even if I took Cuba, I could still just get wiped out of Mexico pretty easy. I cannot put a dent into his 
massive positions in Africa, and this was no exception. I rolled pretty good, but it still just it still just puts it at zero. He doesn't really have to fret. Now I do have Portuguese Empire crumble, so that's good, but he's still gonna have the chance to get back in there before I can play that. And he's going to be able to take Egypt because of uh, VOA. So I guess I should say, it does seem like I have a good hand, but it seems like he's also has a pretty strong hand so far. I can't remember how the rest of the hand goes, but... I go ahead and event Portuguese Empire. But I already know he's going to take Zaire. There's nothing I can do. And he's probably just going to realign me out of Angola, but or at least that's what I'm thinking. He also has colonial rear guards, right? So I wasn't even thinking of that. And I'm thinking I'm probably going to play Brushore on Argentina. It seems like the best option. There's not like a... I guess I could play it on Nigeria. That would be the only better thing odds-wise, but I'd rather just take the 50-50 shot. And actually, I can't even play it on Nigeria now because he puts the op into, uh, what is that, Saharan states? I don't know why they don't just call that Mali on here. That seems like it would be an easier name. Old Timbuktu. I think I, I can't remember if I play Brush War or not here. I might. Or I might do the unorthodox move of playing Willie Brandt. So I'm still thinking... I, I'm i just not that far ahead on the board. I'm a little bit, but... I'm still a bit worried about final scoring. And so I'm thinking every single point I can get... You know, that helps my, oper my chances of getting war... You know, if I get war games, being able to win the game that way... So that's sort of what I'm thinking with Willy Brandt. Um, I don't, I can't really defend Africa anyway, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do this sort of harassment move that gives me an extra VP that he has to respond to. He's probably not gonna just be able to realign me out of Africa immediately. All right, so he's gonna play FYP. Just goes ahead and takes Africa. He starts making a move into Mexico. And I don't hit Brush War this time. So two 50-50 rolls on Brush War. I hit one, fell on the other, but I hit the right one. I mean, if I had to choose, I would definitely prefer to hit the Italy one than the Argentina one, and that's the one I hit. I do not get Iranian hostage crisis though, so that's a bit of a disappointment because that could have really that would have helped my case quite a bit. Not only would it increase my odds of a DEFCON win and uh, maybe having a big last action round advantage on the last turn, uh, then it all obviously also flips the Middle East in my favor. So Iranian hostage crisis in this situation would have been super, super powerful for me. But it is not meant to be. Not meant to be. I'm trying to hold off as long as possible on playing NATO, if that hasn't been obvious. I really debated this action round for a long time. <laughs> so I go for reestablishing European domination and put one in Saudi Arabia and overprotect Venezuela. So brush war's gone, so I'm not worried about that now. So really protecting more against um, I can't remember if ABM's gone too, actually, but if it's not, then protecting against that and, you know, maybe just him getting an opportunity to coup first.
Now, I think what I was hoping is that he would uh, make a mistake here, and he didn't. He played this one pretty smart. I was hoping he would, like, get rid of Shuttle Diplomacy before the end of the turn, and I could maybe, like, catch him with some weaker card at the end of the turn and play how I learned and get, like, four or five VPs that way, but it was not meant to be. I also really want to defend against him trying to take Algeria, which he's clearly trying to do. And just a reminder, I had Africa control early in the game. It is totally meaningless. That's why I... That's why D Decaw can sort of be overrated in a way. Like, once I wasn't able to immediately take Thailand or France, it sort of lost its power on turn one. And you can see that now, because I'm really far behind in Africa. So he uses Shuttle Dip to get those mill ops. I'm able to discard grain cells, which is spectacular for me. All right, so this is the bad hand for me. This is a really bad hand. Now, it's not like... I guess there's not like, you know, it's not like I'm filled with terrible DEFCON cards or anything. I just don't have any ops, right? Because I have three scoring cards. They're all like... They're all at zero, actually, except Asia, I think, is technically plus one for him. But they're all close to zero. I have EEU, I have Alliance for Progress, so I don't want to use those. Um, so I don't have a lot of ops, and I want to play Pershing too for the event. So I really have like six ops maybe, or four ops this turn? Yeah, I guess six, because I would probably play nuclear subs at the end and, either, and discard AFP or EEU. So my current thinking before he headlines is that maybe I'm headlining Central America or South America. But he headlines tear down this wall. And I think I still end up headlining South America maybe. We're going to fast forward through a bit though. Now I should say the one thing about tear down this wall is it's not actually that terrible for me. Maybe I shouldn't say that. I mean, it's it's bad for me because he still gets like a free coup, but it's not like he's not going to be able to just realign me out of France easy like the U.S. often would be able to because it's just uh, we actually. <laughs> Sorry, my cat tried to bite me, which he does sometimes. Um, <laughs> but but normally it's like U.S. You often have that realignment advantage in France, even if you're behind in France. Um, but here, it's just even. So he debates this for quite a while. It looks like, or sorry, I debate this for quite a while. It looks like. So I go ahead and play Central America. This has definitely been a game with a lot of back and forth, though. I mean, if I didn't have such a weak hand, I think I would have had a pretty gain the upper hand for sure on this turn, but these weak cards really change it a little bit. So he could Spain, Portugal, which is bad for me. And nothing I can really do. I got a coup, so... What did I end up cooing? I think I end up cooing Mexico? But I probably should have just cooed Zaire in hindsight. I don't think Mexico was the right move. No, I cooed Egypt. But I think, I mean, bad roll aside, I think Zaire would have been the better choice there. Because now it's actually plausible that I could flip Africa. It's taken a while to reduce his crazy strong positions in Zaire and Angola, but now it's at least plausible that I could do that. But sucks in Europe because now I don't have domination and it's there's nothing I can really do this turn with all the bad cards or 
I shouldn't say bad, but all the low op cards. I just don't have the ops to compete there. Go ahead and get rid of that South America scoring. I think I'll probably get rid of Asia scoring next. I just want to get rid of all these cards. That really doesn't impact me much at all, so I'm not too concerned about that. So we're still clinging on to an eight point VP lead and I'm I'm more concerned this turn than I was the last turn. So I was probably gonna event Pershing too anyway, but I, I definitely want that extra VP. I want every VP I can get right now. Uh, try to maintain a seven VP lead if War Games comes out next turn for me. So he finally hits that second box too, so I can't space, I was thinking about spacing both AFP and EEU, but can't, but I do hit my roll and now I get the four VPs, which is a big bonus because now I'm up by 12 VPs. That four VP box is just so huge when you hit it. So he gets a bad coup roll there. I think, I, yeah, I just end up eventing this. I want all the VPs I can get right now. Forces him to respond. He's not going to be able to realign Algeria with that move. If he has Europe, he's, he's definitely got to plug that back up to prevent domination by me. So that's all the logic behind that move. I'm guessing I probably event Marine Barracks and take the Ops out of Egypt. Because I'm thinking there's a decent chance he's got Europe scoring and maybe maybe I can catch him without a lot of Ops here. And I have to event Nuclear Subs the last action round, but he ends up having a 2 op, so he's able to retake Egypt. I probably should have cooed um, Saharan states, but I just go ahead and plug things up instead. Okay, so even though my cards on this turn were pretty bad. I feel pretty good after hitting that space race roll because now with that and Pershing 2, I've got a 13 VP lead, which is tough. And now he has to event a card that gives me two more VPs. So suddenly final scoring, or not final scoring, 20 VPs is possible. Still unlikely, but possible now. Get rid of EEU. And we're definitely ahead at this point. And so we're going to see this is pretty much game over. Um, War Games is in my hand. That's what I've been really hoping for. To get a big enough lead that I could play this. Though now, at this point, the funny thing is I, I do get War Games. But at this point, I think I could have won it in final scoring as well. So pretty much a no-brainer here. I just play Lone Gunman as the headline and then play war games after that. However, he would end up... Um, if I didn't have war games, this would have been a tricky hand because he ends up having red scare, so I can't remember how long it takes him to headline. But I would have been able to play OPEC for four VPs, so I would have had a 19 VP lead. So I think I still win the game in all likelihood. In fact, it'd be pretty, I think it'd be almost impossible for him to come back. But he does have a really strong hand, this one. But we just go ahead and coup and we play our war games for the victory. Ultra Llama wins.
But I wouldn't have, I mean, obviously I want to win. I always want to win, but <laughs> I would, it would be nice to have a celebration scene for Charles Bronson. Good game. I wouldn't mind celebrating Charles Bronson winning. So there we go. Another exciting Ultra Llama Game Arena. Uh, thanks for watching. Tune in for some more Ultra Llama Game Reviews, eh?